Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been looking over heresies and heretical views denounced by the church, and this time I thought we'd wrap that up with an overview of other heresies that we haven't specifically mentioned before. There was a movement, started in the second century, to try to combine Christianity and the rejection of the divinity of Jesus embraced by the Jewish people of the time. The term Ebionites has been used to describe them, but it was basically Arianism before Bishop Arius and can be shown to be false in the same ways. Tritheism is the view that the members of the Trinity are separate gods rather than separate persons in one god. Many people throughout history have been accused of this, but especially those who held to the Monophysite heresy. We know this view is false for a number of reasons, with the order of the universe and Deuteronomy 6.4 standing out among them. Adoptionism was the view that Jesus wasn't really divine, but was only an adopted son of God. Again, John 10.30, I and the Father are one. Antinomianism, a general term for anyone who rejects laws and moral or religious norms, Countless heretics fall into this overall category of being antinomians. Psalm 118, or 119 in most Bibles, is all about the perfection of God's laws and is the longest psalm in the Bible by far. It's been suggested that individualism is a heresy. This is only true to a point. It's not a sin to believe that the individual is important or to try to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. However, Total self-reliance can become a rejection of the help of God or of the church, or the belief that such help isn't needed for salvation. Isolation from the wider society has a long respected history in Catholicism, hermits for instance, but we should generally be able to coexist with our fellow Catholics on the basis of our shared moral values and faith beliefs, even if we don't have much else in common with them, and don't on a personal level like them very much. On the flip side of that, however, we should always try to maintain good judgment and be ready to say no to any other person, even a fellow Catholic, if they go astray and want us to do the same. There have, of course, been many groups who held heretical beliefs, but about whom little is known today. And there have been many different heretical groups that were very similar in their actual beliefs. For instance, Valentianism, Sethianism, Manichaeism, Priscillianism, Paulicianism and Bogomilism were all Gnostic heresies, believing the physical world was evil and that special knowledge was the key to escaping from it. There have also been many individual heretical sects throughout history, following in the footsteps of previous heresies, but without any new heresies being named after them. And of course, we still have the occasional reincarnationists, Hebrew 9.27, and idol worshippers, Deuteronomy 6.14, who need to be dealt with, but overall, I think that's all that really needs to be said about the heresies. Next time, I think it's time to open up a new season with another series on prayers. We can start with what's called the Jesus Prayer. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.